Thank you. My eyesight's really bad, so I need glasses for this. I work at Thompson Rivers University in Canada, where we have a large Indigenous population. And when we first started talking about how do we decolonize, how do we make our PLAR program more accessible, we came across the first people's principles of learning. So this is a set of principles um, developed by first people, um, specifically uh, First Nations Education Steering Committee, and really important, this is what the elders, what their community scholars, what their knowledge keepers wanted to guide their curriculum. TRU's program has been following these, pro has been following these principles since 2018, and I'm actually going to read them out, each of the nine. This is all public information. I'll give you the website in a bit. But the first one, learning ultimately supports the well-being of the self, the family, the community, the land, the spirits, and the ancestors. Learning is holistic, reflexive, reflective, experiential, and relational, focused on connections, on reciprocal relationships, and a sense of place. Learning involves recognition, recognizing the consequences of one's action. Learning involves generational roles and responsibilities. Learning recognizes the role of indigenous knowledge. Learning is embedded in memory, history, and story. Learning involves patience and time. Learning requires exploration of one's identity. And last but certainly not least, learning involves recognition that some knowledge is sacred and only shared with permission and or in certain circumstances. So when we first saw this, we were really deeply motivated. As I said, how can we do better? How can we be more accessible? How can we be more inclusive? How can we further decolonize our practices to make it more accessible to all students? And since imparting, following these principles that we started to adapt in 2018, we've had some profound lessons. And I'll, I'll just share. These lessons have been good for Indigenous students. These lessons have been good for all students. These lessons have been good for our personal learning. So what we get from this and how it impacts our prior learning program is that there's multiple ways to represent learning. We understand that learning is circular, occurring within relationships, and these relationships are derived from land, people, stories, and experiences. Pedagogies exist in cultural practices of observation and modeling. Community and learners determine learning, emphasizing dynamic knowledge. Identity encompasses physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects. This is a really important one. Indigenous knowledge enriches a broader understanding, making our program much more accessible and inclusive. And that by actioning these understandings, all students have been benefited. So I'll just conclude with things to consider. What can you do to incorporate diverse knowledges into your VPL? So we've been living this for the last six, seven years, and we've talked a lot at this conference about the impact of that, and there's more coming. But I will say that looking from the student-centered approach, looking at it, how to be ho more holistic in what we know and how we know it, really important for us, we had a very, very colonized process. We told students what we were assessing, how we were assessing, and how they were going to share their learning. Now we're building a program that is very open, very flexible. We're going to the communities. They're telling us what they want and need, and we're working our hardest to make sure that we deliver that within the, not always within, sometimes I have to ask for forgiveness. What does our school need? And then how do we weave this? How do we braid this in meaningful ways so that we can be more inclusive? Thank you.